Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, and today I'll be showing you the very first bottle I've ever designed it all the way back eight or nine years ago from the time this video released, my Origami Stag Beetle. So let's go right into it. Let's go ahead and begin folding this Stag Beetle, starting off with adding the usual pre-creases of diagonally and horizontally like this. After getting this, we want to split the paper into thirds. So we'll use one of the creases from the horizontal parts. And that points to the corner, and then make a mark right on that one crease line. You'll then use that mark you just made in between that diagonal crease line right along it. So you can perfectly can split the paper in two thirds, like so. Now from here, we'll just go ahead and split the rest of the paper into 6x6. Six six. After completing the 6 by 6s we'll pre-crease only a little bit around the center line. We'll make these two triangle folds here, and then we'll have the edges line along with the creases like this, like so. Don't fold it all the way, just halfway, and then you'll fold that middle part up to the edge like this. Then you'll inside reverse fold a teensy little bit in there so you can flatten this part completely, like so. Now unfold everything. And we're gonna go ahead and start pretty much collapsing the design, starting off with pleating the very center parts, like this. And then, I'm not sure what technique you use here, but just collapse it like this with those little triangles right there. Then deal is our reverse fold, both sides. Because these are going to be the flaps for the hind legs, and then another one for the mandibles, or the jaws of the stag beetle. So right here, you're going to have to pick a side. Which side do you want it to be the legs? And which one you want to be the mandibles. In this case, the side where you see me doing here is going to be the side where the jaws is going to be. I don't really think it matters, but this is just why I went with anyways. Especially for open sinking reasons later on. But you'll, just have, but you'll open sink that part, and then you'll spread squash right there. So the part with the hind legs is why I did here is a little bit different. This is expired from Satoshi Kamiya's... Uh, I forgot the name of the beetle, but it was like the stab beetle with extra long jaws. But you'll do something like this, where you'll just have to fold that little triangle, you'll fold and unfold that one part across, and then you'll do an open seam. This one might... It looks kind of weird, but it's not that bad. But the flattening results should look, should look like this. If you're not good at that part, so they could do the other version as you do in the jaws. Next, we will split both sides into tiny little thirds here. So the center will be split up into, into sixths, where the pleats are. At least from pleating this, because otherwise this would end up being more um, 12 units if you unfold the, the crease the design from here and then you'll open sink just right along here especially around those tiny little flaps there
But then you'll do the same thing on this side too. So now we have it completed like this. We'll begin by first Pulling the flap down and then doing an inside reverse bolt along the legs there like this. I say the legs because these are where the leg flaps are going to be along with the antennas. But you'll see here because it's like doing a water bomb base on that top part. Then you'll pull this far up on the very center line. I do mean the very center. Something like this. And then you'll squash it completely like so. Then we'll go ahead and bring these flaps in like this. So just bound fold right there. Doing that 45 degree and just flatten it like so. Then insert reverse folds so then you'll get triangles on both sides. Right here, we're going to begin doing an open sink on these triangle flaps, because obviously we don't want these in the way. These might be a little bit tricky, especially since we're going to have to do it about four times. So you'll split up into thirds, and then you'll divide it up again, so it's split into sixth, which is something that you're going to get a lot. And now, once you get that, you'll then have to open sync all of those lines, like so. So while the crease pattern might be a little bit simple, at least in concept it is, especially for the time when I designed it, the Stag Beetle. But the techniques are still, well, rather than a complex level. And also using a little bit of box pleating, especially. And then of course you'll do the same thing on the other side.
now that part is finished. Once you get those legs completed, these ones here on the top, while they may be a little bit similar to how we open the sink these, except you won't do a full triangle, but you'll leave, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but something like this, part rectangle, part triangle, I guess. But the idea is, remains the same though. You just, you split it up into sixth, and you just simply open sink, sink the whole part. And of course, you'll do the same thing on the other side, like so. Okay, so we finally finished up with those numerous amounts of open sinks. So now we'll get to formatting the legs. So we'll now we'll get into arranging the leg flaps correctly. You can start off with the bottom one here. Now the thing is with this design, you don't they are not really gapped. But before I do this though, I will narrow the legs on the very front, I mean on the very tips, like this. And then you'll inside reverse fold right underneath them. So the way you'll do the rest of the legs, You'll narrow the tips of them, and you'll just like fold them. You'll just simply fold them like this. The only thing you're really gonna have to play around definitely is gapping the legs, which is I don't want, don't know if it's annoying 
at all of this, but you'll see that the hind leg is moving up maybe slight bit, like so. But they're always facing the same direction with where you hold them. So you're folding them up instead of down, pretty much. So that will just get the middle legs here. And of course, this, otherwise, later versions of the Stabules I would do. Um, definitely wouldn't do this. I would definitely add gaps just to be able to, of course, uh, just to keep the legs, like, to make them still long without making them too short just because I have to sacrifice certain ways on them. Okay, and then, of course, the antennas on the very top are going to be a little bit different because this time the antennas could be can be shorter so at least that part is a huge deal but if you look um, how I do the lakes though then you'll see why so before I fold the antennas out then on second thoughts I'm gonna do pretty much a stretch right here and yeah so I've been doing this kind of like just you don't pre-crease ahead of time you just you just pull it ever since my very first model so that's just the way I rolled I don't know if I did differently though honestly the design I did mention did change a bunch of times um, as time went on so it was revised many times just for the taste of it. So this is totally fine. But yeah, you'll just pull that one part off. So and you can just kind of look closely. I do need to move the head down a little bit just so the antenna would line up with the one line there. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to hide these layers by doing a close seam. At least on the very back layer right there because of course this will just make the jaws look feature rather than unnecessary layers that are possible to hide away from so what I'm gonna do with the body and the body might be a little bit tricky right here but it might not be as bad when you actually look at how I do it because right there this really is just using a lot more box standard box bleeding techniques without the pre-creases ahead of time once again so I hope that doesn't bother you but you could do some kind of something like this right here But this is just so the body will actually look like the pleats we need for the body for the stag beetle. Like I said, I don't know if this is how I originally did it in the very first design, but something very similar though. So probably impressive on my very first design. Because this design itself is, I think, eight or nine years old now so almost a decade years old so i'm just trying to shape up with the antennas here trying to rearrange trying to fix some of the stuff around here is a little bit tricky but not a whole ton and then right here i'm just gonna do a little bit of a simpler push right here like you're basically creating those like triangle patterns right underneath and I'm gonna just push it down one last time. Like, this part shouldn't be as hard. It doesn't look as bad as it looks. And yeah, really you don't need to pre-crease, at least in my case. And the part, all these parts are totally rearrangeable the way you want it to be. Either the abdomen being bigger or the head being a little bigger, just either way. So now for this next part here, this also comes back from the Satoshi Kabia's uh, beetle that I mentioned earlier, where you're 
creating this square at that very center there. And you're doing it like this. And then you're going to wrap it around here. So you'll need to open up the model a little bit. And thankfully this is the right time to be able to do this, of course. And of course the same on the other side, like so. And close the whole model in like so. And there you go, so now you'll have a more realistic abdomen, just like the real insect. The antennas might be a little bit stretched around the layers, which might be annoying, so just be aware of that. But right here, I'm gonna narrow this part, and this is definitely a part you don't have to do depending on how you're trying to shape this down field. But my favorite way of doing this is to, I think, swivel fold underneath that middle section, that middle body part of the stag beetle. And then you just fold these flaps underneath. Uh, to be with my insects, I prefer cleanness. Maybe some exceptions, but with the stab eel, though, this is the way I want to go for, however. Then on this bottom part, the abdomen is a little bit big, but we could just simply just fold that part underneath. And then you can do a little bit of an inside reverse fold. And also angle it, angling a little bit like this is also pretty effective. If the body parts are smaller to be, then the legs will appear bigger. So that was just kind of like by taste there. So now for the jaws. The jaws will use some basic box pleating as well. The very first layer will just simply do an inside reverse fold. Probably the usual trick you see when doing when I do like hands on a human figure. Uh, this one here will be a little bit of a bigger one. This will take up, see, one, two, one, two, three, four lines. And then this one back here is going to be twice as big, where until it hits that corner flat. And then I'm going to have to push this down just a little bit here. So that way, like that middle, that middle flap will only be one unit big instead of two, just like the ones on the top we just did. Then I'm also gonna crimp the jaw a little bit to the side too to open it up more. Then I'm gonna fold that quarter flap up so you get. I think it's called the pout, but it's just like another. I'm just gonna. It's just like another extra set of teeth. I'm also decide to push the head a little bit. By the way, that part underneath the head, and you'll swivel pull. You'll just pull these flaps. But by the way, I'll just give you a warning for like those who are using like maybe some weaker paper. That one middle section around the head will tear easily. Seems to happen every time, just only a little bit with printer paper, which I use the important cool stuff. And then you'll also do with the jaw a little bit, just for that kind of shape. And you'll do the same thing on the other jaw, and then you'll shape the legs and antenna, and a little bit of the body, and you've achieved my very first spot hole, the origami stag beetle. I hope you enjoyed folding this, by the way, and I will see you next time.